Hi there, Perfecto DeCastro here and welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. This video is the Guitar Player's Guide to Bass. If you're new to this channel, I invite you to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. I regularly upload content centered on guitar and music from gear demos to lessons to vlogs to interviews and all sorts of other fun stuff. I'm primarily a guitar player. However, I also record and produce music, not just for myself, but for other people as well. So aside from guitar, I also find myself playing other instruments, including the bass. Keep watching and enjoy this video as I share my bass tips and advice, which should help not only guitar players, but anyone who wants to understand the role of bass, as well as beginner to intermediate bass players. I'll be using my Warwick thumb bolt on, five string bass for the playing examples in this video. A lot of the things that I will discuss in this next part will involve some music theory. So if you're not well versed in music theory or you just want a refresher, I invite you to check out my music theory for guitarists video series right here on my channel. That way we're on the same page and you are up to speed. Everything that I discuss in that video series applies to the bass as well. This is what guitar players usually do as soon as they pick up a bass. <laughs> so this next tip is specifically aimed at guitar players. The bass is not just a guitar that has fewer strings. It is a completely different instrument. In fact, you have to switch off guitar mode in your brain and start developing a bass mode. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. The first thing that we need to do is to get comfortable with the lower register of the bass. For the most part, the bass is tuned similar to the guitar, but pitched one octave lower. The main reason why bass players usually play single notes is because in this lower register, chords and intervals sound muddy and unclear. Now let's take a regular open E power chord. If I play that chord on the bass, all you'll hear is a rush of low end and the notes are not distinct. Compare that when I play it one octave higher. The higher register lets you hear both notes a little more clearly. Now let's see how low we can go with this power chord shape. D is okay. C is fine. Now B is starting to get muddy, so any chord played below the B note will be uh, hard to distinguish. Now if you try to play other intervals, it actually sounds even muddier. So let's take a, like a major third. If I play that one octave higher, then you can hear the interval clearly. That's why when bass players play chords, they usually use the higher strings or they play it in the upper frets. With that in mind, when you're playing in the lower register, try not to let the notes ring over each other like this. Thank you. 
and do your best to articulate your playing and separate each note. This will give you a nice firm low end that will serve as a great foundation for your song. Okay, now let's talk about using a pick versus using your fingers in playing the bass. Now I've played and studied classical guitar for quite a long time, so I have pretty good control over my right hand fingers. In fact, the finger alternating technique in classical guitar is called apoyando, and this is how we play our scales. And this technique translates nicely onto the bass. Now, if you want to develop your right hand bass technique, all you need to do is to alternate your index finger with your middle finger. And the motion is similar to making your fingers walk. And I put that on the bass. As far as rhythmic division goes, you can assign the strong beats to one finger and the off beats to the other finger. For example, you can assign the strong beats to your index finger, so that will count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then your middle finger plays the eighth note off beats. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Also practice swapping the beat designations. So in this case, middle finger will play the strong beats and then index finger will play the off beats. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... And then work on getting comfortable on your fingers walking on the strings. Change strings. And then start pumping out bass notes. All your guitar exercises also apply to the left hand, so you can do and your scales. And so on and so forth. Now when playing with the pick, the same mechanics generally apply. You can play downstrokes and upstrokes. And you can follow your strumming patterns as well, but instead of strumming across all the strings, you're just playing one string. Now, I also recommend uh, using specific picks for the bass depending on the tone that you want. If you use a regular thin guitar pick, you'll get a scratchier sound just because of how the material interacts with the thicker string. If I switch to a thicker guitar pick, you will hear the difference in tone right away. You hear more of the note and less of the plastic scratching against the string windings. Now, if you want the warm round tone that you get from finger style, but your technique is not up to par yet, I recommend using a thick pick that's made out of a softer material. This pick that I have right now is around two millimeters thick and it's made of a rubberized plastic. And this softer material isn't as scratchy sounding as the regular guitar pick. Compare it with And of course when you're using a pick some guitar techniques can cross over as well like palm muting I'm not even going to go into slap bass because there are proper bass teachers that can show you that technique way better than I can In the end, just don't pay attention to any of those bass memes and use whatever technique that makes you sound good and play well. If you're enjoying this video so far, I would really appreciate it if you slap... <laughs> Wrong channel. Just hit the like button. 
Let's hop on over to Logic where I have some tracks prepared to further illustrate this discussion. Okay, I have this drum track and I'm going to play over it in guitar mode. Okay, the very first thing that guitar players need to do to develop bass mode is to play less notes. Play less notes with your right hand and play less notes with your left hand. Now listening to the drum track, it's a straight ahead eighth note rock groove. So the least that you can do is to match that eighth note groove on the bass. From there, we can play even less. And this time, what we're gonna do is we're going to let the groove breathe and not play on beats two and four. So instead of going one and two and three and four, and we're going to not play on beats two and four. One and two and three and four, and one and two and three and four. This way, the backbeat provided by the snare drum cuts through nice and clear. Now notice that as soon as we let off playing on beats two and four, we start bobbing our head because of that backbeat provided by the drums. Another thing that I like to point out is that technically I don't stop playing on beats two and four. What I do is I replace an audible note with a percussive tap on the strings. So instead of playing one, two, three, four, I do this, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, three, four. This keeps me right in the groove pocket and further reinforces the percussiveness of the backbeat. Okay, this time let's play even less. Let's choose to follow the kick drum pattern. Now, depending on the feel that you want, you can also play around with the note articulation in your bass lines, just like I did in that previous clip. You can play them short, or you can hold and sustain them, right? or a combination of both. And I'm maintaining my percussive mutes on beats two and four to keep me in the pocket. Now I'm gonna add a guitar part that I previously recorded, and I'm going to go through all the bass variations that I've played so far so that you can hear the effect each variation has on the overall track.
As you've heard, the overall feel of the track changes drastically depending on which variation I used. So feel free to experiment on your own using these tips. Now another bass tip that I could give to guitar players is to shoot for repeatable bass parts. As guitar players, we like to jam and change things around as we play. However, that approach uh, will make it hard for a bass part to lay a solid foundation for the song. I'm not saying that you need to play the exact same thing from start to finish, but rather just try to follow a general pattern throughout the whole song and minimize deviations to specific spots. That way when you finally play that sick bass lick, it actually stands out and it's not considered overplaying. Okay, so far we've been playing a pretty basic chord progression. A to G to D back to G. Now let's take a look at how we can spice up that chord progression by changing the bass notes that we play under it. And a good way to do that is to play around with the concept of chord inversions. So let's take our first chord, A major. A major consists of three notes. The A note, which is the root, C sharp, which is the third, and E, which is the fifth, right? So the basic idea of chord inversions is to shuffle these three notes around so that you still play the same three notes, but with a different note in the lowest register. So now we have root in the bass, root position, third in the bass, first inversion, fifth in the bass, second inversion. Okay. So if the guitar plays an A major chord, I have the option to play either the root A or the third, which turns it into a first inversion, or the fifth, which turns it into a second inversion. Okay. Now I'm gonna loop the A chord in Logic and I will play the different inversions on the bass so that you can hear the effect. So that takes care of A major. Now let's take a look at the other chords in our progression. The next chord is G major. And in G major, we have the notes G, our root. Our third is B. Our fifth is D. Okay. Now for D major, we have the following chord tones. We have D as the root. We have F sharp as the third. And we have A as our fifth. Now I'm going to go through the whole chord progression and play around with the different inversions. Changing the bass note according to the different inversions really spices up and changes the overall feel of the chord progression. So you can have a simple chord progression and have it sound a little more sophisticated by changing the bass note.
Now let's take it a step further and dive into chord extensions. We can totally change the context of our chord progression just by changing the bass notes that we play. One way to do this is to figure out which extended chord contains the notes of the major triads that we have so far. For the A major triad, A, C sharp, and E, we can use the F sharp minor seven chord. So F sharp minor seven notes are as follows, F sharp, A, C sharp, and E. So if I play an F sharp bass note under the A major chord, collectively the bass and the guitar will make up a big F sharp minor seven extended chord. And this is how that sounds. Root. F sharp minor. Okay, so that totally changed the sound of the chord. We went from a major tonality to a minor tonality. Now let's work out other minor seven chords for the rest of the progression. So for G major, we can use E minor seven. Okay, E minor seven has E, G, B, and D. And for D major, Let's use B minor seven. B minor seven has B, D, F sharp, and A. So now, depending on which roots we decide to play, we can make the chords sound either major or minor. Major. Minor. Okay, so now that we have all these options, um, let's turn this three chord progression into a four chord progression and we'll mix and match the major and minor roots and see if we can come up with uh, something interesting. Okay, the possibilities are endless. So have at it, experiment to your heart's content and come up with really interesting bass lines and chord progressions. Now the bass doesn't need to follow or mimic the other parts of your song. It can be its own thing. So here's a couple of ideas that you can play around with. This guitar part is a repeated riff that is played in the higher register. And I'm going to use the bass to outline the chord progression under it.
Now I'll have the guitar play the chord progression and the bass will play opposite the previous idea and we'll keep it grounded just on one chord. Very cool. Okay, now let's check out some riff-based music. A typical guitar-centric approach is to have the bass double whatever riff the guitar is playing. Kind of like this. Depending on the riff that is being played, that is certainly a valid approach. However, you'll get more mileage out of the bass if you stop thinking of it as a guitar doubler and have it just do its own thing. The drum track has a 16th note feel on the hi-hat, so I will adopt that and pump out a 16th note groove in the lower register. Okay, I really like how that works, but I'm going to take a couple of notes from the guitar riff just to tie everything together. I'm gonna to take the last few notes of that riff and use that as a punctuation. Okay, that works out nicely. Now the same idea applies even if you don't have a five string. You can play it in the higher register and still have it sound like a bass centric part. I'm gonna try playing around with the bass line some more using all the stuff that we've discussed so far and see if I can find other interesting ways to support this riff.
lots of fun. Now let's talk about tones. I like to think of the bass as an extension of my guitar tone and its job is to make my guitar and the whole recording sound huge. Okay, so let's take a look at how I set things up in my DAW. Okay, so here are the drums and guitar. No bass yet. And here's the E key for my guitar. Notice that I pretty much take out everything under 100 hertz because in that low frequency range, that's where the sound of the kick and the bass lives. And the guitar has no business being in that low frequency. So if I play the guitar back, turn the EQ off. Turn the EQ on. The EQ just gets rid of that low end mud that is in that frequency range. That way the guitar gets out of the bass territory. Now when I record bass, I usually use two tracks and each track is treated differently. So I have my amp track, which is grindy sounding and has a lot of mid range content. And then I have a uh, DI track, which is cleaner sounding and has more of the low end information uh, attached to it. And from here, I just mix the taste depending on the overall tone that I want to achieve. If I want a rounder sounding bass, I put in more of the DI track. If I want a growly bass, I put in more of the amp track. Now let me put in the guitar and you can hear each part distinctly and they're not stepping on each other. And as long as the guitars and the bass are not fighting for the same territory frequency wise, I can pile on as many parts as I want. So let's see. There you go. Okay, there you have it. Those are my bass playing tips and advice for guitar players. Now, if you have any other bass playing tips and advice that I didn't cover in this video, feel free to share them with everybody in the comment section below. Now go do all the good YouTube things that you guys do. Give this video a thumbs up like, feel free to share it with your friends. Do subscribe if you haven't yet and pick up your own practice mix perfecto t-shirt from my merch stores. Links are in the description box. I'm gonna work on my bass chops some more because you know the drill. Practice makes perfecto. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm.